If you're new to this channel, we take a detailed look at guitars so you can be more informed on what you're looking at. Now this guitar came as a request because we did the Paul Reed Smith SE and you guys asked how does the S2 compare? So if you haven't seen the SE video, you can click that link down below either before or after watching this video. Today we're going to be checking out a PRS Custom 2408 S2, S2 standing for Stevensville 2 because it's the second production line in the U.S. facility in Maryland. And that's why on today's Know Your Gear, we'll be taking a detailed look to see if this guitar is right for you. This is new for 2022, and it's the most feature-heavy S2 I've seen them come out with. So let's get into some of the details of this guitar. First, you have their low-mass PRS locking keys, which have brass shafts, and you have a synthetic bronze powder blend nut, which is kind of like graphite, but something that Paul Reed Smith uses. Now, this is the same nut they use on the core models in the U.S. However, I heard that they're going to be going to bone nuts on all the core models soon. Other features it shares with the core model is it's a 25 inch scale, it's a non-chambered body, and for the first time on a custom 24 S2, it has the pattern thin instead of the pattern regular like the core model. It also has nitrocellulose lacquer just like the core model, which is standard on all S2s now, now this guitar also has a 10 inch radius fretboard just like a core guitar with a rosewood fretboard and 24 medium sized nickel frets. Now a feature that's different on this guitar than the core guitar is it does have the same bird inlays as the core 24 but they're ivory colored plastic like the John Muir Silver Sky. I prefer this look however on the podcast it comes up often that you guys prefer the more expensive abalone look. The guitar also includes a deluxe PRS gig bag. Okay, so now it's time for the geeky stuff. So let's inspect the guitar, and to do that, we're gonna use the train method. So let's start with tuning the guitar up. So once we have the guitar tuned up, we're gonna check the relief. Now, a lot of you are not gonna have a 25 inch scale notched straight edge. So we're gonna use the old trick of just using our fingers, pushing down the first fret with your first finger, and then on your right hand, use your thumb to push down on the last fret, and just use your finger to lightly tap on the string as far as you can reach out to see how much play. And as you can see in this, the string is pretty much resting on the frets, which means there is pretty much no relief and this neck is pretty straight. Now, I like a little bit of relief in the neck, but let's go ahead and keep checking this thing. Now, you can see here, this action is super low, one millimeter, or 0 0.04 off the 12th fret. That's pretty low. That's great if it doesn't buzz. Now checking the intonation, it was really good. It was just slightly out in a couple spots. I made a quick adjustment. And what's nice is I have a quick video. If you want to learn how to do that down below in the description, it teaches you how to check your intonation and set it up in under four minutes. Inspecting the nut, I was not shocked at all. I always thought PRS does some of the best work I've seen and it looks fantastic. Now using my fret wire gauge, which is a piece of fret wire that's the same size as the PRS fret wire and sliding it right underneath the nut to see if it lands right on it like a zero fret it does look at that perfectly and why that's important is if the slots are cut too shallow it's a little hard to push down on the first fret they're cut too deep they're going to buzz against your first fret and this is definitely very very good okay so to go ahead and test the frets we're just going to play each one very nice so no dead spots no issues like that considering how low the action is and more importantly what i noticed is the frets felt really polished just nice I like it, no gritty uh, kind of messy frets to deal with, just polished, very nice. So now that we know that the frets are level and polished, let's go ahead and check the fret ends using a nylon sock test. And so far it feels pretty good. There feels like there's a little spot where it's snagging just a little bit, but looking at that, you can see maybe that little, little teeny mark. And I would give this a four out of five or maybe even four and a half out of five. Let's check the base side. Now this feels even smoother. In fact, the other side felt pretty smooth, but like I said, there was a little mark there and this has nothing, look at that. So I definitely have to give this a five out of five. Very good. So let's get into the dimensions of the neck and how it feels. First off at the nut, we have 42.86 millimeters width or basically 43 millimeters, which is 1.6, very standard. And then on the 12th fret, we have 52.57 millimeters. The thickness at the first fret is 22.27 millimeters or 0.8. And the thickness at the 12th fret is 23.9 millimeters or 0.9. Dimensions wise, it's gonna line up with an, a 90s era Fender Strat. However, one thing you're gonna notice is it has what we call more shoulders. So if you look at the C carve on this template, it's pretty close. It looks like it's a lot wider than this template, it's not so much wider, it's just got bigger shoulders. Look here, if I compare the two, you can see it's just a little bit wider and it's only around the first fret that it does this. As you get to the 12th fret, kind of lines back up with a Fender C-shaped neck again. So let's talk about some of the things that makes this S2 less expensive or different than the core. First off, the back plates are not recessed into the body, they're laying on top. Some people don't like that, I don't particularly mind. Another thing they do to cut the cost from the core models is they don't use one piece of wood for the neck. They're putting it together using scarf joints. And you can see I've traced out the scarf joint right here. In the past, I've shown you how manufacturers do scarf joints. But in this case, I'm going to show you actual footage right here of them making an S2 neck. This is exactly how this neck was put together. 
And as usual, when they make a scarf joint, they're gluing on the heel because obviously the piece of wood isn't thick enough. So this is right where we talk about the handshake. The handshake is what I call it where the neck meets the body. How comfortable is it to hold it there? In other words, play there. Access wise, I feel like the access is very, very easy. Uh, comfort wise, it would be nice if it was more rounded over like they are, you know, uh, like more modernized guitars are getting. This seems a little outdated in today's age, but they might be in the same place where Gibson and, and companies like that are, where they're basically like, they try to innovate it, people kind of react to it in a negative way. I personally would like to see them kind of change the contour on the S2s, why not? Why not mess with the S2s? They don't have a deep history. They're not iconically, uh, you know, connected to the origin of the where the guitar started with PRS. I think this is the guitar they should mess with some of the innovative ideas uh, and kind of make that contoured right there. Now, something cool is they use the same one piece mahogany block for the body. In fact, they don't even sort them differently than the core models and they're using the same thickness. Now, although they share the same mahogany body, they have completely different maple caps. The core has a two inch maple cap that's book matched and the S2 has a one inch maple cap that's book matched and they don't pick the better flame tops for the S2s. As you can see right here, this looks great, but if we change the camera angle, it kind of washes out. And you can also see right here that there's this, not a blemish, but you can see the piece of wood that doesn't look right it's not really attractive it sticks out a little bit this is something you wouldn't see or at least hopefully not see on a core model but this kind of stuff does come through on the s2s it looks like the bridge on the s2s are different than the cores let me tell you what's different first of all the saddles are cast metal and they're not brass like they are on the core the tremolo block is also cast metal and not machined out of one piece of brass like the core model this bridge is also the same bridge they're using in the PRS Import SE series. So the S2s and the SEs share the same bridge, which is about $105 US, where the core model has its own bridge, like I said, that has brass saddles and brass block. It sells for over $300. So it's a big difference in price. Now, what they do have in common is they're using the same screws. So they're using six screws that have a notch, which runs the perimeter of the screw. It lets the knife edge sit on all six screws, which helps the vibrato system stay in tune when using it. Let's check the tremolo and see how well it stays in tune. do it. One of the things I do love is they use the same pickup rings as the core models. And what I love about Paul Reesmith pickup rings is that they recess all the screws so that they're out of your way and you can never scratch your hand. It seems like such a simple idea. It's great. Looking in the electronics cavity, we have a 500K made in Korea potentiometer right here. We also have a 500K made in Korea potentiometer for the tone pot with a 0.22 microfarad capacitor attached to it. And then we also have, if you look over here, we have a treble bleed. This is very common for PRS guitars. You also have two mini switches, which are, these are the coil splits that they use for each pickup. So you can coil split each one individually. And of course, a three-way switch. All the electronics look really good. There is no conductive shielding inside the cavity, but there isn't any in the core either and i think it's just because they feel like they're pretty insulated with all the wiring and what they're using so let's take a look at these 8515s first off they're made by gnb if you don't know who gnb is they're one of the largest pickup manufacturers in the world they're in south korea and these are supposed to be replicated to the 8515s that are made in the paul smith factory in maryland now these are wax potted and now let's check the specs now looking at these pickups in more detail, we're looking at the resistance at 8.78, which means there's not a lot of wire on this. Now looking at inductance, we're at 4.73, which means this pickup's gonna be a little hotter and push the amp just a little bit more than a vintage PAF style pickup. Let's see what happens when we coil split the bridge and it drops to 4.46. And usually at that reading, we're gonna see a very bright sounding pickup. And going to the neck pickup, we're reading at about 8.38, 8.39. With the inductance reading about 4.26, again, this is just going to be a very slightly hotter version of a vintage style pickup. And when we coil split it, it drops down about 4.26 as well. And just so you know, this model came in at 8.1 pounds, but their weight range is about 7.1 to 9 pounds. This one is Bonnie Pink Cherry Burst. However, it also comes in a Rize Verde, Lake Blue, Black Amber, Red Fire Burst, and Elephant Gray. Looking at pricing, these guitars sell for about $1,930, which means it sells for half of what the core model goes for and double what the Paul Reed Smith SE goes for.
Now looking at the used market, these are too new to be out there used, but if you look at the S2 Custom 24 that sells for about $50 less than this guitar, they run used somewhere between $1,000 to $1,675. And if you're looking for alternative brands to this guitar that are equal in quality, in my opinion, there would be the ESP E2s, which are made in Japan. I spec'd out a Kiesel with comparable features and it priced out at about $2,049. You have the Gibson Les Paul Studios, which are made in the USA, and the Godin LGXTs, which are made in Canada. So let's go ahead and play this guitar. I'm gonna run it through my Fender 65 Deluxe Reverb with an SM57 mic'd up. We're gonna start with a neck pickup in humbucker mode and see how it sounds. <laughs> go ahead and use that coil split. Now, like I said, there's coil splits, uh, two of them, one for each pickup, and that gives you tons of different combinations to use. So here is the neck pickup split. So I'm gonna do some comparisons. Here is the neck pickup. That's the humbucker. Coil split it. It's really nice. It's holding together. It's really keeping a consistent volume. I like it. Even though we saw when we metered it, it really cut in half. The volume does not cut in half. I mean, it's almost the same volume in the room. Middle position. This is middle position two humbuckers. And what's great about this is now we can coil split them, but we can do so. Here's here's let's just do two humbuckers. The two humbuckers coil split, so it's two single coils. Let's go ahead and do humbucker bridge single coil neck. Oh yeah, that's bright. Let's go ahead and do the opposite. This is now humbucker neck and single coil bridge. Almost the same. Okay, two single coils. Yeah, it's weird how much bass adding back one of those humbuckers does. That's nice. Okay, and then we have the bridge. This is humbucker. And I can feel it's kind of pushing the amp now. Okay, let's coil split that. Volume full forward with the coil split. So now this is the coil split. It's nice. I feel like a lot of times when I coil split uh, certain humbuckers, uh, you get this, you get the single coil tone. In other words, it gets bright and it thins down a little bit, but you lose all the sustain. That's not happening here. I know because I keep checking to see if I actually coil split it after I'm playing it for a second.
Okay, I've switched over to the Bad Cat Cub 40, running through a Vintage 30 uh, 112 cabinet. <laughs> Let's go ahead and coil split that. That's nice. That's one thing that's nice about different pickups. They kind of, uh, they kind of motivate you to play differently. Uh, when I played the humbucker and it was kind of thick and mid-rangey, I just wanted to hold chords. When I go to single coil, I kind of want to change the way that same riff feels. So it's got a different take. Let's go ahead and go to the neck pickup. This is the neck uh, full humbucker. coil on that same neck pickup. It's nice. It's got that same thing, uh, full humbucker on the neck. This thing really sings. Now I've switched over to the Engel Fireball 25. I'm running through the same vintage 30 cabinet with the mic in the same spot, the SM57. Let's go ahead and play. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the neck pickup. So what about the pros and cons? Well, on the cons side, one of the things I have to say is even though I can say very positively that I like this guitar as much as a core for half the price, I can also say after reviewing the SE for half the price of this, I like that almost as much as this. I don't know if this is twice as good as an SE, just like I don't know if a core is twice as good as this. I really can't speak to that. I just don't know. I can tell you this, of the three models, this is my favorite because I feel like it gets me as close to the core as possible with the specifications I like. The other thing I like about this over the SE, just so you guys know, since I have that deep dive video you can also check out down in the description, is that although that says that's a wide thin neck, this is a pattern thin neck. So this neck's just a little thicker, a little chunkier than that neck. And I kind of prefer this neck over that neck as well. As always, I want to thank all of you for hanging out till the end of the video. Until the next time, know your gear. Now, just remember, the builders who send these guitars for my review have a drive to make great guitars. They agree to send non-cherry-picked instruments and let me try to find the best and the worst points of their guitar. Nothing I say or show is meant to take away from their hard work, dedication, and I applaud their ability to check their egos at the door and share their workmanship with us. Let's face it, most companies are not willing to do this.